today we're going to be working on the BMW R1200 GS Adventure. Um, it's coming up for its MOT. I've noticed that both the rubber gaiters on the rear swing arm have uh, perished. Um, I'm not 100% sure if they're MOTable or not. Um, on a car, obviously, they are, so I would presume they're the same. Anyway, it's uh, quite a big job. By the look of it, you have to remove the rear swing arm and see if a uh, normal Joe public can do it without any special tools. So, uh, wish me luck. Here we go. Of course, the sensible thing here would have been to leave the bike on the ground on its side stand to uh, loosen these off first, but just so I could show you better, I've left it like this, so I've just put a block of wood underneath to wedge the front wheel and the back wheel. Wheel off. Just a little note when you're pulling the exhaust off, I noticed that this has been rubbing on this before, so. Um, I'm just going to chuck a rag over here and uh, just protect the exhaust. Ouch. That was tight. So also under here um, we've got to loosen off the rear shock to remove the rear shock which I've already taken off once haven't I if you remember to have it rebuilt. Still going strong, thanks to thanks to T Tech, uh, and uh, yeah. So we'll remove this. I've seen people heating up the bolts because obviously there's some uh, thread lock on them. I'll see if that's actually necessary or not. I'm quite interested. Okay, this is a a T50, the same as the wheels and um, we'll loosen this off and um, we'll have to use both hands. I'm just going to slacken this bottom uh, suspension bolt off and that's reasonably tight. So whilst I'm here I'm just going to slacken off this nut on the back of this, uh, what would you call it, a stabiliser bar? for the brake, um, it's not horrendously tight, might be worth just taking that off whilst we're at it. Obvious tip, but as they go along I put all my bolts into a, an old um, soap container, washing soap container, and then at the end of the job if you've got any bolts left you know you've missed one out, also you know where they all are and you haven't lost them, and the amount of minutes possibly hours I've wasted in my life looking around for nuts and bolts that I've just put down somewhere. So on this side, sorry the volume's probably going to be a bit crap now because uh, I'm out in the wilds a little bit more. So on this side you've got that stabiliser bar um, bolt I'm leaving in at the moment because I reckon as soon as I take this out the, the weight of the swing arm is going to drop and I still want to take out all these nuts and bolts um, first and the, uh, also the brake caliper. Um, and then we'll see where we go from there.
I've tied the swinging arm off to the top of the frame, just really simply with a bit of webbing, uh, just so I can get everything out without it dropping. Um, ooh, too much. Uh, that should be fine. And now I can remove the rear suspension. With the rear seat removed, you can loosen the top of the uh, shock absorber. Oh. So with this top bolt removed, the suspension should just come clean out. Hopefully you can see in here the wheel speed sensor, which I'm a bit nervous of because the one on the front is really fragile. I do want to, don't want to chew that screw up. There you go. There's also a little screw at the top here. Again, super tight. Now we've got the movement we need. So hopefully we've got to drop this down and separate this here. But first of all, I think we've got to drain the oil at the bottom. There must be a drain plug somewhere. There's one on the back. Um, so we'll drain the oil through there. Actually, it's very clean. Not bad considering. It's probably the first time it's ever been changed. It's done 51,000 miles this bike, so. Okay, we'll top that up in a minute. Okay, so I've popped the drain plug back in for now. 99% um, of the oil's come out, and obviously now we can see the parts that we actually want to get to. So, um, if you only had to do this um, back one, if that's the reason you're doing this job, um, then obviously you don't have to go any further than this. Um, but oh, I need to get to the front one as well. So I have to extract this drive shaft and apparently um, it should just draw out. But I don't know if I have to remove the whole swing arm to get it out. Okay, so this next bit has been concerning me for a while. Um, so obviously the, these outside cap peg screws aren't a bother. And, but the one in the middle is used to pull this central swing arm pivot plate out. So, I haven't got a pillar. And I have ordered something that if I can't do this, then I can use a, a tool to get it out. However, 
That doesn't look like it's going to be a problem, does it? Oops. I don't know how loose. Oh, there you go. So that's just come straight out. I've actually ordered a, a slide hammer <laughs> to pull that out. But that's nice and loose. It's been greased up well so yeah okay that's that then it needs to come out just come out easy and then in the middle of here we've got a 30 mil nut which supports the swing arm that might be something you're gonna have to buy because a lot of people wouldn't have a 30 mil socket coming okay so all doable so far okay so that's that swing on pivot come out so hopefully all of this swing arm should come off now a bit of a weight so brace yourself and make sure everything's out of the way you don't cut any of these wires probably should zip time out of the way really okay let's go there you go not too bad probably weighs about 20 kilos 25 kilos not the end of the world so let's nice start off put that down gently on there block of wood. There's the other piece we want to remove. So, okay, I'll give all this a good clean up and then we'll see what happens. I thought that came from there. I have seen people repair these on YouTube, um, but in my experience, um, you're only delaying another failure. So whilst you've got it into, into pieces, I know they're expensive. You know, this piece cost me something like 45 pounds, but whilst it's in bits, you know, it's just, it's a no brainer to replace it. You know, especially as I'm keeping the bike and I'm, even if I sold it on, I wouldn't want someone else to have the, the trauma of having to go through all that again.
and once you've got centralized on the other swing arm bolt this one actually goes in really easy and um, it is very tight it's 145 newton meters i'm trying to do, to do myself any damage tightening this up didn't realize when I was looking at these pieces before they've actually got like clips on here which obviously f go into these cups so um yeah kind of see why they're expensive let's put some grease on there it'll just help them to go together that's probably a better way around of doing this on. Right, I'll worry about that later. I'd quite like to get this back up here. Measured out 180 millilitres of gear oil to refill the gearbox. Of course, I put the uh, plug back in and tightened it up. Probably did that off camera. Camera. So next I've got the wheel sensor to put back in. So I've got to be really careful with this as I was taking it out. Uh, clipped on that. And then this will wind somehow came through here. And then there's a the ring on here. Be careful of. Let's just shut that back in. It holds that in. And then there's the other one that was up here just for the cable. Keep the cable out of the way. <clears throat>
on my bike that is 50 newton meters. Okay, so the last thing to do is just torque the wheel bolts up to 60 newton meters. This time I put the bike in gear. That was sensible, wasn't it? So, with the wheel bolts all torqued to to up, that's easy for you to say, um, that's the job completed. Um, was it an easy job? It was, it was okay, it took a bit of time. Um, I think most people should be able to do that. It's always really hard filming something and um, doing it at the same time. It takes twice as long. So uh, I hope this helps you guys. It, sometimes it's just useful to see someone, you know, struggling a little bit and um, you know seeing what things look like when they're apart so hopefully that will help you anyway um, I'm glad I did it probably saved myself quite a lot of money you know if it was done at the garage I don't know how many hours they would have charged for that so um, just a couple of little jobs to do on the bike now and then we're ready for the summer keep up the spannering guys